Now that we understand the fundamental theorem of calculus 1, now that we understand this, we need to look at the fundamental theorem of calculus 2, which is this thing here. So as a reminder, as a reminder, if you're trying to work out the area from A to B of let's say x squared, you, uh, you so so that means you want to find this area here. You would simply integrate this, whatever that means, find the antiderivative, and then you would put the b into here, which would then give you this, and then take away, and then you would put the a into this. So that would then give you this thing here. So what that means is this thing is exactly the same as this. This is exactly the same as this. Now we know the technique, we can use the technique, but we just, at this stage, we just don't know why this works. Why is it that when you want to find the area, you would simply do this thing here? We know the technique, we can do it, but we don't know why it works. So in this video, we're going to try and understand why it works. So the fundamental theorem of calculus 1 starts out by defining a function, by defining this function. So, uh, so let's start out by defining a function start out by defining a function here by defining this function so if you want to find the area from a to x you would simply define let's define this function so in some of the early videos when you define this function uh, it would then give you this graph which we've seen in the previous video now this graph here is smooth and continuous this line graph well, if it's, if it's a line graph and can smooth and continuous, then you can differentiate it. Remember, you would get the height divided by the base and then take the limit as h tends to, to 0. Well, we've seen it in the previous video. Apparently, you can differentiate this. So, this is you differentiating it. Uh, and when you differentiate this, we're just going to call it g prime. So, uh, so if you look at, let's scroll back to the fundamental theorem of calculus 1. This whole thing here equals f of x. And we've seen why in the, um, in the previous video. So let me just remind you. When you, um, so back to the fundamental theorem of calculus 1. When you differentiate this thing here, the whole thing then becomes f of x, the function itself. We've already seen why in, in the previous video. So I'm expecting you to be able to understand up to up to here so uh, so when you differentiate this it will then become f of x so I'm expecting you to understand up to here so now um, in in some of the early videos we've seen that um, if you have two derivatives that are exactly the same then the two antiderivatives the two sorry hang on the two antiderivatives must also be exactly the same but differ by a constant. We've seen this, so I'm expecting you to know this. So what that means is, if you, um, if you, if you, th this is what we really want to know, g of x, because g of x is really the uh, area from a to x. So that simply means integrate this thing here. Find, re remember, if, if two derivatives are exactly the same, which we've, which we've got here, Remember, you're, you're, you're differentiating this. So that means that um, the two, we know that the two derivatives are exactly the same. That means the two antiderivatives must be exactly the same, but differ by a constant. So when you get to this stage here, what it, what it means is if you want to find the area from a to x, if you want to find the area from a to x, which is this thing here, remember, that's this thing here, then simply, then simply find the antiderivative. So in our case, it's um, in our case is x to the power three over three because when you integrate this thing here, it will then become this uh, plus a mystery number plus a constant. So what that means is, hang on. What that means is, if you want to find the area from uh, a to x, then simply integrate integrate the function integrate the function so the area from a to x is given by this thing plus a mystery number but as it stands it's kind of useless this thing because um, if you want to know the area you would evaluate it um, 
Well, you have to plus a mystery number, but you don't know what this mystery number is. It could be 7, it could be 3, it could be 13, it could be anything. So as it stands, this mystery number is making the whole thing useless. But you can get around that, that by, um, by changing the way you think. So hang on, it will make sense later on, bear with me. So if you want to find the, the area from A to B, if you want to find the area from A to B, Remember, this function allows us to work out the area from from uh, from one place to the other place. So what you do is you imagine, ultimately you want to find the area from A to B, but imagine you're trying to find the area from Z to B. So ultimately you want to find the area from A to B, which is what you want to find here, from A to B, but trick your mind into thinking of you integrating from Z to B. So find the area from Z to B, that's this whole thing here. Trick your mind into thinking of finding the area from Z to B, and then you take away the area from Z to A. So you take away this small area here. You take away this small area here. So, hang on. Um, so the, the area from A to B is given by from Z to B, take away from Z to A. Now, if you want to find the area from, from uh, Z to B, then then integrate this plus our mystery number so remember this mystery number could be a 7 could be a 13 could be whatever um, f find the area from Z to A so you would integrate this thing here plus a mystery number um, r remember this this these two mystery numbers will be the same so for example if this is 13 then this must be 13 if this is 7 then this must be 7 so um so the mystery number the thing is the mystery number will cancel will cancel itself out because um minus c here so the no matter what this mystery number is you know it's going to disappear because of this minus c here so the area from uh from a to b is given by this thing here which is exactly the same which is consistent with um with what we did earlier right from the start of the video which is b to the power 3 over 3 take away a to the power 3 over 3 so that's why the um, the, the second fundamental theorem of calculus works so now we understand this hopefully you can follow that